Well, hello there, amazing and wonderful nerdy people. We are going to have a look at Sandoz Desktop 2.5, apparently. But what this basically is, like, look at it like this. A replacement for Windows XP. And the installer here is quite neat. And uh, let's go through the installer. This used to be my main daily driver version. It was version 3 and 4. Because I used Linux back in, in the 2000s, so between 2000 and 2006, 7 ish as my main driver. And this distribution, when I had friends over, was the distribution that they could actually figure out using. I didn't have questions. What is this weird thing? They actually just thought I themed out Windows XP. So I, I used this distribution here. It is a commercial distribution, so we will get some you know, licenses and stuff like that. And I will just do an express install. Don't want to go into the custom. And I will format this system here. We will have to put in a password because back in the day, we didn't use sudo. We just had an administrator account because we were hardcore folks back then. Let's use a name. I was the first one to use test or I'm telling myself I was the first one to use test as a username. So therefore I have patent pended it for the rest of my days. Uh, let's click next. It's warning off that it will do basically take over the whole drive and whatnot. Let's get into it. So again, this was Linux in the early 2000s, trying to compete with Windows, making it convenient and easy to install Linux. And again, this actually reminds me a little bit of the Calamaris installer. Just a tight little bit, but it still reminds me of the Calamaris installer. Which is actually what we would need. So I will let this one out and uh, I will come back to you guys later. So now we have installed it and it's actually asking us to create a rescue boot disk. It's one of those floppy thing, Maduski, that you prob guys probably can't remember how it looks like. I I'm getting old now because I can't really compare it to anything you guys know. Well, I will, I will throw you a picture of you guys so you can get an idea of what it is. It was basically 1.44 megabytes of pure pleasure you could install porn on if you was a kid like me in the 90s. But we don't want to create one, but it was basically just so if something fucked up, you can plop that disk in and it will in, in um, and it will boot into CentOS. So again, this is really, really pleasing and easy. So I'll just uh, click enter here. It's now booting up. So now this is like a really, really ugly, boring login screen, but let's um, let's log into the good old CentOS. Yeah, you get it. And and they, they, they have done, or they did some of their own thing. So so if you guys are looking at my playlist later on, I recommend you guys do it of my retro distributions. You will see a distribution called Linspire. So Sandros did kind of the same thing as Linspire. They kind of did a lot of things on their own to make it more accessible for newcomers to use Linux. Some people didn't like that in the community, but I kind of like that they did that. So this wizard here, I think this uh, first one wizard is actually a KDE thing. And it's built on KDE 3.1.4 and it has crossover office 3.0.1. We will get into that later on. Mozilla 1.6 and we'll show you that later on. But yeah, I think this first one uh, visit here is a KDE thing. They just themed it with Sandra's um, branding. So let's go through this one here. Just keep everything as, as default because it really don't matter. Uh, printers, yeah, we had printers back in the day. Now it's only basically dinosaurs that are using printers for the most part. Let's click next again. And now it, it's basically here we can set up the uh, behavior. So I would, you can go Unix and you can preview it down here. I don't want to use that one. We can do KDE. We can preview that one. I don't want to use that one. We can do Mac OS. We can preview that one. Don't want to use that one. And we can use Sandra's default and we can preview that and I will keep this one. Let's click next. We don't want to register online. I actually think I do have some codes for this laying around. And now we can go into the control center and Sandra's networks, but we don't want to do that. We will finish it here. So the desktop, well, it's KDE. You know, it's KDE from that time. And like I said, I think it was 3.1.4. And you get basically what KDE was back then. Kinda a lot like Windows. And there's a shit ton of screensavers here though. 
Oh, uh, the mouse is a little bit finger key in these old uh, virtual machines here. So we have a little bit of, of help down here. We have the launcher here, application, I pause it, and you will see that I will not read everything up. Uh, crossover, we will come to games. And this is just like basically a default installation. Uh, Internet, News Tracker, Mozilla, 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 Instant Media, uh, Multimedia, we also have graphics. Do we get GIMP? We get paint, paint image view. I don't think we get uh, GIMP by default. We get real one, real play. And I'm, I'm, when I'm, I'm going to show uh, you know the interesting software in a bit. We also get the uh, open office. We get systems. We get remote desktop sharing. As you guys can see, it's a lot like Windows. Utilities for all you utility nerds out there. And we have Find, Control Center, Sandros File Manager, Sandros Networks. Again, I'll show you guys that in a little bit. What is interesting is their file manager. Again, this is KDE of the old. There's not much to say about, oh, where's my mouse, about KDE from back then. It's a, it, it, it's kind of like KDE today. You know, it was a lot bare bone, but it was kind of like KDE, or kind of what KDE is today. And it it, it will look, uh, some say it looks dated. I kind of don't mind this look here, but it do give me that Windows XP feel. So again, interesting software. This is their own file manager. I think yeah, I think it's based on the KDE file manager back then, but you can see here it's copied by from 2001 to 2003 by Sandros themselves. Author licenses. Uh, I don't can can we see what licenses are under? I don't know. I don't I don't even know if this is like uh, was closed sourced or what it was. I can't really remember to be honest. But if you can remember Windows XP from back in the day. If you're old enough to have used Windows XP, this looks a lot familiar to you. But like I said, it is built up to be basically Windows XP. You know, we have printers, we have networks. It's set up by default to talk with Windows machine. Uh, networks, we have CD Writer, CD ROM. CentOS was actually a really, really interesting company, and, and I really, really liked them, to be honest. But yeah, this is like a, an amazing little tool, this file manager here. And like I said, it, it really, really reminds me of Windows XP. And that's what, what they were going for. You probably are in, uh, interesting or curious about what this Sandros network is built. It's Symnatic, or it's their store. And in here, you could download, install software. And if you had the add-on CD you got, I think it was with the deluxe edition, you could install extra software. And of course, we can't get the, uh, you know, we can't talk to the repositories because they are not online anymore. It, it, you can see here, it's it's not it's not existing. But there was like a new site uh, page here, shop, new uh, application. It is a little bit, like I said, it, 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 it reminds me a lot like Symnatic from, from the Debian world. But it is, again, it is based on the Debian. Here we can see the installed applications, we can see games and stuff like that. But the great thing about this is that you could also install RPMs. And I actually did that here. Install dev files, install RPMs. Sometimes I downloaded, or not downloaded, but I had it because I didn't have internet when I was using this one. Uh, the, the, uh, I did have internet, but it was really, really thick and here slow. It was the internet back then. So I, I bought a lot of DVDs with the, or CDs with Linux on it, and some was RPM based, some was dev based. I could use a lot of the RPM files with this distribution, so I could mix max dev and RPM files. I don't know if that was a good idea, I never had a problem, but it seems to be working. And I really, really like that. That's one of the reasons why I used this also, because it was easy and convenient to basically just double click an RPM and it installed it. I don't know if it converted it to a dev file, it probably did, and then installed it. This is something really interesting, really new. We don't really see anyone nowadays trying to do, you know, their own package handler anymore. They just use GNOME software or Symantec or whatever is default with the distribution that they are using. So let's go in here to the crazy thing that's crossover office. What is crossover office? Well, let me tell you something, younglings. This is basically wine on steroids. It's a, it was, I think, I don't know if it's up, uh, is available anymore, but it, it was or is, if it still exists, 
basically a Windows emulator. It emulated Windows to an extent that you could install Windows applications and use them. And quite, it was more compatible with Windows programs than Wine was at that time. But again, it was a commercial system. You could you could install Windows programs here. And again, not, a, not all worked. Some worked depending on what kind of program it was and what uh, and, and what kind of subsystem it was using and whatnot. But a lot of things worked, like Word worked and stuff like that. Games I don't really want to go into. It was like we have paint. I think this is just, yeah, this is just a good old paint kind of thing, you know. Uh, I can't even remember if it was. Yeah, K-Paint. Again, they tried to make it look a lot like a fresh install of Windows XP. Mozilla is something you guys probably are interested in. Mozilla slash Firefox, call it what you will. It was called Mozilla in this time here. And if you go in and click about Mozilla, you can see the information down here. It was basically for Debian. 1.6.x and it was done in the 16th of February 2004. It is old, it looks old, but it is what it is. This, this was new back then or newish back then, so you guys kind of have to remember that. I wish it have Gig had GIMP installed so we could look at that. We have MP3 player. Yeah, that's XMS. This is basically or was our version of Winamp back in the day. And if you don't know what Winamp is, well, this is basically how we listen to music back in the day. Basically, that that this is our iTunes Spotify. So we used MP3 files, we downloaded them, had them on our hard drive, or we converted DVDs and then they uh, converted them to MP3s. And we bor borrowed our friends' MP3s and they borrowed our MP3s. And then you could get skins for it and whatnot. I don't know, is there even any skins for this one here? Yeah, there's a lot of skins here. So this looks a lot like it looked like on Windows in a lot of uh, instances. But this was actually my default skin, the Matrix theme here. And it, it, it's really, really interesting. And real one player, so real time, so real time movies and videos was a thing back then. It was kind of an alternative to VMA and MOV files. It was used by Mac OS and Windows. You know, Mac OS was MOV and still is to this day. And Windows loved the M M W W E M A, I think it was. And we have OpenOffice 1.1. And you could also get a thing, StarOffice. Yeah, StarOffice was in the business edition. It's really, really interesting, to be honest. It's a really, really interesting distribution. And it was a distribution for people like me that had friends and, and that have people that used Windows XP also using their computer. And we see here we have a really, really nice guide here. So why did I use this distribution? I've said it previously in the video because of my friends. It looks just enough, especially the version 3 and 4 was looking like a more polished version of Windows XP. So when I was holding these parties where we got drunk and naked, and uh, we didn't get naked, but we did get drunk and we did kiss and fool around quite a lot apparently, if you ask my friends today. <laughs> I wanted them to be comfortable enough that they could sit and play DJ because I was just like, hey, here's my playlist. I locked my playlist down so they couldn't delete my files, but hey, choose the music you want and then they could just queue up the music for them it was they didn't know they want linux unless i i told them that we want linux i did use a lot of other distributions on my laptop and stuff like that but on my main computer for i would say two or three years i used CentOS three and four so it was the perfect system for me that have exclusively non-linux friends i was the only one that knew about linux I was the only one using Linux, so I needed a distribution that not only I could work with and have fun with, but my friends could work with and have fun with. Read the links down below to get a nostalgia kick in your in your buttholes, or not buttholes, but in your behinds. And uh, go nuts, because it's a really, really interesting story about this whole distribution and this company. See you all later. Don't do anything foolish. Bye-bye.